just Mina. Welcome to Beyond Science 2. Wouldn't it be nice to have an unlimited supply of money? Once in a while, it crosses everyone's mind how life would be so much easier if money was readily available and in abundance. For most people, this usually leads to the result of working harder and making a better living. However, for a select few, they come to the conclusion that if the lack of money is the root of all problems, then the obvious solution is to make money. And they're not referring to simply earning it by hard labor or by running a lucrative business. They mean literally creating the money themselves. Thus was the birth of art and felonous act of counterfeiting, which has earned the notorious reputation of being one of the world's oldest profession. Counterfeiting is essentially copying an existing currency and producing an imitation of this legal tender without the authorization of the state or government that currency belongs to. The circulation of counterfeit money has an undeniable impact on the country's economy on a micro and macro scale. First of all, the value of real money is reduced because of the propagation of false ones. Second, the artificial increase in the supply of money results to a significant hike in the prices of commodities. People will soon lose confidence in the currency, which may force them to demand alternative and more complicated means of payment. The practice of producing fake currency can be traced all the way back to the time when the concept of money was first developed by early human civilizations. Before paper money was introduced, people counterfeited coins by mixing pure gold or silver with base metal. When government institutions transitioned into using paper currency, unscrupulous individuals started to produce false money and sold them wholesale for sizable profit. During the colonial period of the United States, those who counterfeited currency were perceived as a serious threat to the state, that those who were caught doing so were punished with nothing less than the death penalty. Counterfeit money was also utilized by the Great Britain during the American Revolutionary War in an attempt to weaken the American economy by reducing the value of the continental dollar at the time. Practice continued on during the American Civil War. The value of the Confederate States dollar fell when some of the members of the Union had heavily produced imitations of Southern note. To curb the widespread practice of counterfeiting at the time, the Secret Service Division of the Department of the Treasury was formed. And today, this law enforcement agency is still in the business of protecting the country's financial systems while also providing protection to and ensuring the safety of the US President, the Vice President, and their immediate families among others. And in the past, counterfeiting was not that easy to pull off. And for those who attempted to make their own money, they had to shell out real money first to get the equipment and materials materials they needed in order to get started. But in recent years, printing your own money got a whole lot easier. All a curious person needs is a computer, a scanner, and a color inkjet printer to create his own water fresh counterfeit bills. If you scan a $20 bill and set your scanner at the highest resolution, you can then print that image by using your basic printer. Of course, printing imitation currency this way will not get you far off if you want to use the money to pay your day-to-day -day expenses. Finding a piece of paper with the same feel as the paper used for money is already a challenge in itself. Common paper is made from the cellulose of trees, while the paper used for money, called rag paper, is made from a combination of cotton and linen fibers, which is why it is thinner and specially crisp compared to ordinary paper. Aside from that, bills today are printed with advanced security features that set them completely apart from counterfeit ones. The current series of $20 bills, for example, which was first printed back in 2003, have several highly sophisticated anti-counterfeit features that make it difficult for counterfeit to replicate. For one, these $20 bills have a plastic security strip embedded in the paper. There's also the number 20 on the bottom, right corner on the face side of the bill, which is printed using color shifting ink that turns from copper to green. There is also a watermark on the bill which shows a faded and smaller portrait of President Andrew Jackson. And if you look at the back of the bill, a Euron constellation containing 90 faint yellow color 20s are visible, which prevents casual counterfeiting using photocopiers. Considering the complexity of how dollar bills today are printed and the secrecy surrounding its sophisticated security features, it is not surprising that casual counterfeiters like teenagers are often immediately caught. These people who would print their money with the wrong paper, using the wrong colors, and in the wrong arrangement. Moreover, they tend to hand the money to individuals like small business owners and acquaintances who are inclined to report their fraudulent operation. Nonetheless, nothing is impossible to the determined, and some individuals and counterfeit rings have gone the extra mile to stay as ahead of the curve as they can while it comes to printing fake money. Arrests in recent years have shown that not even high-tech safeguards can stop a crook from cheating his way through life. For example, in 2014, self-taught graphic artist Health Kellogg, who is also known as the printer, got sentenced to federal prison for committing counterfeit offenses after he, along with his crew, allegedly distributed fake $50 bills worth more than $1.1 million throughout Georgia, Tennessee, South Carolina, and Florida. They created their counterfeit currency through a multi-step print process that used 
office printers and glue. According to the Secret Service, Kellogg created two layers to print an imitation of the watermark and just glued them together. He also made it seem that the fake bills had security threads embedded in them by using color pens and inks that showed up under ultraviolet lamps. Another man from Rhode Island was also arrested along the same time as Kellogg's capture after he allegedly managed to erase the ink on $5 bills and turn them into $100 bills. He apparently learned the trick of using chemical soap to remove the ink on the paper from a simple guide he found on the internet. Then there's Canadian Frank Barassa who regards himself as a god when it comes to counterfeiting. Barassa gained infamity a few years ago for masterminding the production of $250 million worth of fake notes which were virtually undetectable to the naked eye. He managed to print bills of such remarkable quality by counteracting a paper mill in Germany to make the paper and have them printed with a watermark and the security strip using a machine he purchased in Poland. He also acquired printing equipment and software and set up a printing shop on the outer reaches of his town in Quebec. Eventually, authorities tracked Barossa down and had him arrested for the counterfeiting practices. However, they eventually set him free after he agreed to surrender $200 million worth in counterfeit notes and pay a fine little over a thousand Canadian dollars. As for over 50 million that he didn't return, Barossa directs the inquiries of those who wonder of remaining money's whereabouts to his accountant. So in conclusion, while the likes of Barossa in Canada may have somehow gotten away from counterfeiting money worth millions of dollars, it cannot be stressed enough that the same crime in the United States is a federal felony. Counterfeiters once caught, and most of them are eventually caught, can be punished with a 15-year imprisonment and can expect to have their property seized aside from being compelled to pay fines. And so, if the thought of literally making your own money crosses your mind, always remember that you can never gain something for nothing. You may be able to print your own money and you may be able to use that money to pay some of your everyday necessities for a long while and you might even get to sell bundles of them and get a sizable profit in return. But eventually, all of the fake money you pass on to other people will get traced back to you. And once the authorities find you, it will be difficult to escape the harsh consequences of your seemingly harmless actions. So anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Bye!